The Board of County Commissioners acts as a quasi-judicial body when it hears requests for rezonings and conditional use permits. Applicants must provide competent, substantial evidence establishing facts or expert witness opinion testimony showing that the request meets the zoning code and comprehensive plan criteria. Opponents must also testify as to facts or provide expert testimony whether they like or dislike a request is not competent evidence. The board must then decide whether the evidence demonstrates consistency and compatibility with the comprehensive plan and the existing rules in the zoning ordinance, property adjacent to the property to be rezoned, and the actual development of the surrounding area. The board cannot consider speculation, non-expert opinion testimony, or poll the audience by asking those in favor or opposed to stand up or raise their hands. If a commissioner has had communications regarding a rezoning or conditional use permit request before the board, the commissioner must disclose the subject of the communication and the identity of the person, group, or entity with whom the communication took place before the board takes action on the request. Likewise, if a commissioner has made a site visit, inspection, or investigation, the commissioner must disclose that fact before the board takes action on the request. Each applicant is allowed a total of 15 minutes to present their request, unless the time is extended by majority vote of the board. The applicant may reserve any portion of the 15 minutes for rebuttal. Other speakers are allowed five minutes to speak. Speakers may not pass their time to someone else in order to give that person more time to speak. It is November 2nd, 2017. Happy November to you. So glad to have you here tonight. We're going to work through our uh, zoning agenda. Commissioner Smith, are you with us, sir? I am present and accounted for. And um, you wanted me to, are you? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. I just want to make sure, Commissioner Smith, that you can see us live online. I can. Okay, can you see the screen behind the commissioners? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, it's because it's blank. <laughs> it's a dark screen at the moment. Okay, there is a projector. Okay, I got it. Okay, great. There's a projector next to the podium, which will display documents presented by the public. So you can look at that screen if anyone submits a document. And Space Coast TV will focus in on the screen for you. Um, and speakers, members of the public, if any of you plan to present documents to the board tonight, if you can put the document on that gray um, piece of equipment to the right of the podium, face up, it will display on the screen behind the commissioners. It also, if you've already submitted documents by email or at a prior hearing, if you could tell the board that you've already submitted it, they will know that it is already in the zoning file and we'll be able to locate it more easily that way. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bentley. Uh, we have a quorum. I'll call this meeting to order. And it is our uh, pleasure to have Mr. Rob Medina with us here for the invocation. He's a Congressman's, um, Congressman Posey's assistant, Mr. Medina. Well, if we could all rise. Well, first I'd like to say, I prepared a sermon. <laughs> I'm glad I got chuckles out of you. But first I'd like to thank you, each and every one of you, for providing an invocation into each and every meeting. Don't you know that an invocation by its very definition is to invoke the presence of God? So we're asking God to come right into these chambers. Understand that it's a decision, it's a willing decision, and so that's what we're going to do collectively as we join our hearts. Are y'all ready to do that? Well, Father God, creator of our heavens and earth, we give you thanks and praise. We glorify your name, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for your presence here. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place. Lord, give them wisdom, Father God, as I bestow a blessing, not only on each and every commissioner present, but the staff members and everyone in this audience, Father God, at the sound of my voice, that they recognize you for who you are, Father God, that you're supernatural, comes right into their natural, Father God. And everyone that has an issue going on today that's coming before the board, give them peace. Give them that discernment, Father God, that they see beyond what is right in front of them. Give them that wisdom that you've provided Solomon, Father God, and peace beyond their understanding. Father, I declare them blessed. I declare these proceedings blessed by the mighty power full name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. 
we have no consent agenda tonight, so we're going to move right into the public hearings. Okay, um, the first item, item 4A, is a request for a change of zoning classification from RR1 to AU for Robert and Cheryl Vassar. The property is located at the corner, I'm sorry, the le is located at 6601 Margo Lane on Merritt Island, consisting of 4.77 acres and the North Merritt Island Special District recommended approval. Commissioner Barfield? Do you have any cards? I don't believe I do on any A's. Okay. Yes, I, I have no problem with this, uh, this rezoning. It's uh, going to lesser density. It's consistent with the future land use. And so I'd like to make a motion we approve, uh, approve this zoning request. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Barfield, a second by Commissioner Isnardi. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Item number B. Items uh, 4B and 4C are companion items for a small-scale comprehensive plan amendment and a change of zoning classification for Mark Flickinger and Skidmore Trailer Park and Sales. Uh, staff believes that there has been some confusion on the part of the applicant. Uh, he, would, he expressed a desire to enter into a binding development plan, and um, I think he believed he did not have to show up at the meeting tonight. So if, if that's the case, then we uh, suggest that you hold it. And, and table the item? Uh, right. Okay, so um, do I have a motion to table this tonight? I'll make a motion to table. I have a motion to table. Do I have a second? Second. Is second. that for both items or just one? Both? Both items? Both. Both items. Both items. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Okay. Item I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, item 4D is a request for conditional use permit for on-premise consumption of alcoholic beverages for beer and wine only for Riverview Tower, LLC. The property is located at the corner of Sun Tree and U.S. Highway 1 in Units 107 and half of Unit 108 containing 1,800 square feet. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Board recommended approval. Okay, Commissioner Smith, do you have any comments, sir? No, I have no objection. Okay. Do, do you want to make a motion? Sure. I make a motion to approve this agenda um, item. Second. Pardon? Uh, we have a motion and a second by Commissioner Isnardi. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Passes 5 0. Okay, item 4D is a request for a conditional use permit for a bed and breakfast for Michael and Maria Granitowski. The property is 1.02 acres in size, located at 3645 Rosehaven Place in Titusville. Um, the planning and zoning recommendation was for approval with the, with the stipulation of only one room for rent. Staff has received seven letters of objection and uh, one disclosure from a uh, commissioner from the D1 district with a copy of the deed restrictions. Thank you. I do have some cards on these with Ms. Maria Grantowski. This is our state license, just I don't know if um, Kurt Smith can see that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Maria Granitowski. I'm a teacher of Vera High School and a landowner at um, 3645 Rosehaven, homeowner of uh, 3645 Rosehaven. I'm here to request a conditional use permit um, for my house to be continued as an Airbnb. I um, did receive approval um, on October 9th from the Planning and Zoning to uh, go ahead and keep that um, as an Airbnb with a stipulation of one bedroom, and that is my plan. Um, I have been running an Airbnb in my house for two years already, and on uh, July 14th, 
I received a visit from the county saying that somebody had complained about it. It was an anonymous complaint. I don't know who it came from. And because of that, I went ahead with the process of the conditional use permit. I have already been running this Airbnb in my house for uh, two years with minimal to no um, impact on the neighborhood. I have one bedroom which houses one to two guests, usually a married couple, and they park in my driveway. My driveway is pretty far back so nobody can see their car. Um, the people usually check in in the uh, late evening and then they're on their way touring different parts of Florida. So there's, they're really not staying for very long. I usually, my average stay is anywhere from one to two nights. Um, that's basically, you know, I guess I could speak after the um, complaints. We do have, um, we do have a 12, there's about 12 houses on my block. It's a cul-de-sac. And um, up to a certain point, I did think there was a deed restriction. However, I found out at the planning and zoning that there was not a deed restriction. We don't have a homeowners association. We don't have anyone to force the deed restrictions. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. That's, I think that kind of explains my request. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Eric Hunstead. Hello, I'm Eric Hunstead. Thanks for uh, letting me speak. Uh, I am also a homeowner on Rosehaven Place. I'm not a renter. I'm a homeowner. Um, and, Sir, excuse me? Oh, please excuse me. Um, there, no one has complained. We've all kind of known there's been a lot of traffic there. We live on a short dead end street, but just because we haven't complained doesn't mean we're trying to be good neighbors, but now it's kind of out there, so here we go. Um, you go to her Airbnb reviews, people stay for as long as nine days. There's people from Russia, there's people from all over the world. They're unvetted. I don't know these people. I have printed her Airbnb reviews, 140. And if you do the math, some people, she's rented the room, she's rented the room for 300 days in two years. If you do the math on how many people stayed, it's a lot more than she's insinuating. I have it right here. Um, then I'd also like to say the the deed restriction situation is misinformation. As far as I'm concerned, I'm under the impression it, it's, I've got the deed restriction right here. It's platted. It's in the public record. It's, it's, I don't know, just because the company that developed the neighborhood went belly up, I don't think the, the law concerning the public record and the deed restrictions went away. It says right in here how they are to be enforced, how they are to be renewed. It also says that the only way to change it is it has to be signed by the majority of the owners on the lots agreeing to change the covenants in whole or in part. Um, that's on page three of the deed restrictions, item number 15. Let's see. I think that's about all I have to say about that. I have no ill will against Maria. I just don't like that kind of traffic on my street. Thank you, sir. Thank you. My name's Ann Burquist. I live at 3635 Rosehaven Place, which is directly next door to Mike and Maria. First thing I want to say is it makes me act absolutely sick that I have to be here and go against a neighbor. I like Mike and Maria. We've been neighbors. We've lived in our house for over 16 years. Our families grew up kind of get together. We were good neighbors. I've watched their house when they've gone away. I've watched their animals when we've gone away. This is really upsetting to me. Um, I want to answer a couple of things that Maria had stated and why I'm here. I came home from shopping one day and I saw a public hearing notice by their mailbox. Then we got a card in the mail saying that there was going to be a planning and zoning hearing. My husband and I both came. We knew a lot of the neighbors had written letters. There was only one person within 500 feet that got a notice that stated that they were okay with it. One person in 500 feet, plus we had gotten letters. During the planning and zoning meeting, Maria stated several things. She stated that she only wanted one bedroom. She stated that Mike worked from home and that she worked part-time. 
She stated she needed income. She needed the income. She didn't want to be in B, because she, she didn't want to do breakfast or cook. And she only re uh, requested the cup or, or the change of zoning because somebody complained. It was not us. I don't know who it was. She said that she had been doing it for over two, uh, two, two years. So after the planning and zoning meeting, some of my neighbors said different things. I don't like to take people's word. I like to investigate myself. One of the things that was said was about what the name of the Airbnb was, which was against our deed restrictions. So my husband looked it up, and, and, my, and you just heard Eric, he looked it up. We, had, we saw that there were different reports, how long people were there, that uh, they stayed. When Maria said that uh, Mike worked from home, she was part-time, it leads you to believe that somebody's always there. We learned that's not the case. There's people that have been there when they weren't there. That's stated in the reviews. Mike still has to go into work at times. Maria's not always home. I don't know their, all of their business. I don't want to know all their business. I don't know their finances. I do know that when I moved into my house in 2001, I had to sign, when we signed our contract, acknowledging that we had deed restrictions. We did not have an HOA, but we had deed restrictions. Everybody that moved in that I'm aware of had to do the same thing. They acknowledged the deed restrictions. We're in a platted community on a one-block street. It's a little hill. It goes around a corner. It goes down a hill. We back up to 95. Everything between 95, Fox Lake, South Carpenter, and Garden Street are single-family homes. Most of the homes are big homes. Our house is like 4,500 square feet. It's not a little house. I bought this house, we bought, most all of us bought this house because we had families. We wanted to raise our family in a nice, safe, family-oriented neighborhood. I don't know about Airbnbs. This is all foreign to me until this came up. I've done some research. You can't possibly know Who's coming into your neighborhood? Nobody can do a background check on everybody. You hope for the best when somebody comes in. If this goes through, it changes our neighborhood forever. We don't anymore have a single family home that's just for a neighborhood with families. We have people with young children. We have a special needs child on our block. I don't want to have a motel. If it goes through, yes, maybe it's, it's one bedroom, but we already know there's been more than one bedroom. It's in, it's in the reviews. Then what, if it goes through, then what happens six months from now or a year from now? Well, I want to do two bedrooms. I want to do three bedrooms. I want to do my whole house. That's what Airbnbs do. So what's it going to change? It'll change us forever. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Jack, request. Thank you, sir. If you'd state your name and address for the record. I'm Jack, I'm Jack Berkowitz. I live at 3635 Rose Haven Place, Tysville, Florida. I just have a few comments. Um, one is that we wouldn't be here and Maria would not have asked for this cup if code enforcement didn't come to her door, tell her she was in violation and tell her she should ask, ask for this. She had been doing it for two and a half years. She's very proud that she's been doing it for two and a half years without a license, without telling her neighbors, without seeking a license, without seeking a cup. Two and a half years. Marie knows very well that we have deed restrictions. We had, we had someone in, in um, bought property in our neighborhood and was going to put a road through one of our lots so he could develop 40 acres behind us. And he went to a, to a party at, at Maria's house when we were out of town and told them what they were going to do. 
And Maria was part of, part of the group that, that got all upset that, that someone was going to change our neighborhood. And we, and we were able to resist it to large extents. We came to, to an agreement finally uh, where they can only develop two, two additional homes in the back through a flag lot. But Maria knew we have deed restrictions. She knows that. That was part of, our, that was part of the whole conflict. I was at the planning board um, hearing a couple weeks ago, and Bruce Moyer, Moyer, I'm not how sure how to pronounce it, he was the individual that stated several times, we do not have deed restriction because the incorporating um, company had been dissolved. Well, that's not quite accurate. Because he stated that to his fellow board members, they believed him that we have no protection and they went ahead and, and, and voted for an approval. They did this contrary to staff notice that the subject site, which would be the proposed cup, would fail to meet the local standards outlined in section 62, 184, 1551 of the zoning regulations. They were primarily concerned about the, the legal uh, aspects that are codified, such as does it meet the zoning requirement? Well, it does as far as the zoning. That's one of the possibilities. That doesn't mean it's automatic. Apparently, they weren't looking at that. In fact, one of the board members said, said why do we have to listen to this? Can't we just make it automatic? It's not supposed to be automatic. It's supposed, it's supposed to take into consideration the character of the neighborhood. Under appropriateness, under the administrative policy for future land use, factors to be considered for re rezoning, for the appropriateness of conditional use based on consideration of actual provisions, conditions contained in this article, and other applicable laws, ordinance, regulations relating to zoning and land use regulations. Gee, that might mean you're supposed to consider that we have a deed restriction. And based upon the consideration of the public health, safety, and welfare. We're concerned about our, our health, safety, and welfare con changing a private single residence neighborhood into a commercial industry. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Mr. Ali Olivio? Hi, my name is Peter Olivo. I live at 3655 Rose Haven Place, next door to Mike and Maria. Uh, my one concern is is that uh, cups have been tried in a residential neighborhood before, and uh, Congre uh, Congressman uh, Commissioner Scarborough shot it down years ago. Because if we're going to be able to put um, B and Bs in neighborhoods, I'm going to go buy all around the whole state of Florida and start putting them in there. Because once you make a precedence, it should be good with everybody, even if they have deed restrictions. That's my story. I have kids in my neighborhood. I have five that live there. I, don't, I work all the time. I don't have time to be worried about who's up and down my neighborhood. That's why I bought in a cul-de-sac. Not to have strangers come in and out of my neighborhood and put me to where I have to stay worried. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Ms. Grantowski, did you want to come up and comment? Okay, I'm going to try to address the concerns of my neighbors. Uh, yes, I've been open for over two years, and I've had quite a few visits. That speaks to the popularity. Um, my average stay is one or two nights, but there have been a couple times where people have stayed three or four nights. Um, they're, they're touring Florida. Um, I, first of all, Airbnb does verify they do a background check on on their and when you sign up and you give your birthday and your social security you're you are double checked by airbnb for uh drugs um any kind of any kind of criminal record and any kind of uh pedophile record just want to put that out there second these people are coming into my home i they're staying at my home i have communication with them through email and through the phone before they arrive i very wary of who I bring into my house, of course. 
So that's, that's one of my main things I want to put out there. Um, licensure. I do have a state license. I didn't know that it was against the county violations. Um, I called the city of Co Titusville at the time when I was trying to do this. At the very beginning, I went through all the steps trying to make this as um, legitimate as possible. Um, I didn't know it was that I was against any kind of county violations at the time. So that's why I am going for a cup. And the whole idea of, of a cup is to change the you know, to change what the definition of. So I'm trying to, uh, to do that at this point. Um, I have less cars parked in my driveway, even with, and by the way, it's one guest at a time. It's one guest, one room at a time. But just to make this clear, I have one more, less truck, less cars, less vehicles in my driveway than my neighbors do. A lot of them um, have grown children living at home. A lot of them have, I have, a couple of people down the block rented their home to, to, uh, to a young lady. There's, there are as many more cars than what I have in my, in my um, driveway. Um, so that's all. I just wanted to address that. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Isnardi? I have a quick question. I'm sorry. Have you, um, have you had any incidents at all at your place? No. I have, every, I have had probably over 200 guests, not probably 300. I have met the nicest people ever. So I haven't had one incident. And have you ever had um, a neighbor complain to you about you doing this out of your home in the last two and a half years? Not before the cup, no. Not before this trial. And because actually, I, I hear a lot of people and their reasoning, but I don't hear any. I don't hear of any incidents, and I don't hear of, of any discussions that occurred with you. No, there weren't. Uh, that's why I'm saying this was of minimal to no impact because. Nobody knew I was doing this. This was my private home. It's my self-determination. Nobody was um, aware of it. That's how little impact it had. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Commissioner Tobaya. Thank you. Ms. Granikowski, uh, thank you. Uh, just one quick question. Are you submitting all of the required uh, bed tax and state taxes on all of the states? Air Airbnb, um, when they... Through their site, they already charge the state tax, and we pay federal income tax. And right after this, I'm, I'm going to be required. I'm going to apply for the BTR for the county. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay. This, Commissioner Smith, did you have anything you'd like to say, sir? I have to. I'm learned because no, she. Had, Obviously, done a good job keeping the neighborhood sane and, and quiet. I still have a problem in that. If you want to be a landlord, Commissioner Smith. Commissioner Smith, we can't understand you. I don't know if you're able to hold the phone in a different way, and maybe we can understand you better. It's garbled. How about, how about now? Yes. That's good. That better? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll start back at the beginning. Well, she hasn't had any incidents in this particular case, and she's doing a very good job, evidently, of keeping the neighborhood sane and quiet and with no incidents. I have a problem with rental units just popping up wherever they want to, and I'm. We have. We have zoning laws for a reason, and I think people that live in a quiet neighborhood have every expectation that it should remain quiet. And what happens if somebody else in her neighborhood decides to do the same thing and they're not as judicious as she is, or three or four more people in her neighborhood decide to do this and they're not as judicious as she is? I just think it's a bad idea to introduce businesses into private neighborhoods um, I just don't think it's a good idea. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Isnardi? Um, I don't really, you know, it, it's my opinion that I don't really have a concern with this. And it's not because I, I've, in, you know, in regards to what Commissioner Smith had just stated, this is why you come to the board. This is why you talk about your particular situation, about, you know, in your case, what you've been doing and what works for the neighborhood. I mean, I would be less apt to allow another applicant or agree with another applicant that would try to do this in your neighborhood because there is one that is existing. You know, I would be a little more concerned if this was a hotel 
if you were renting out multiple rooms. But I think, you know, the strongest argument, you know, about the vetting and stuff like that, I'm sure that that organization that you do this through does that, like you stated. But I mean, in reality, I mean, you, if you vetted everybody that came in your neighborhood, I mean, it's an unrealistic expectation that people that stay at people's houses, whether it be for a few hours or for a few nights, it's, it's not a fair comparison. I don't think that it's a good argument. Now, this board will have to decide whether or not we agree that this should the zoning should be changed in your case. However, I think that that, that argument in itself is not a good argument. Um, and because there's not been any incidents to this point, I don't see that, that it's a big issue. So I don't have a problem with this. And again, this is why these situations come to the board and they're not automatic. Um, otherwise, it would be an administrative act because we, we take into consideration all factors. So, I mean, I would be in favor. Commissioner Barfield. Um, I have a question for legal. Uh, based on the uh, restrictions in the uh, in the deed restrictions, I mean, do they hold? I'm the deed restrictions are called notice of restrictions, but they are also known as covenants. And the um, paragraph 15 specifically mm -hmm. provides that the covenants run with the land, and that everyone in the neighborhood is bound by them in effect. So even though the homeowners association doesn't exist, even though the developer has gone belly up, these deed restrictions are in effect. So residential use, no lot shall be used in whole or part for anything other than single family, family residential purposes is, is valid. Yes. However, the board, this board, does not enforce private deed restrictions. But you can look to the administrative policies, and they may influence how you see the so neighborhood. My point is, when these people bought, bought these homes, they bought with this understanding that it's going to be single-family homes. And uh, I, I think we need to take that in consideration. They didn't sign up to, for a B and b to be in their neighborhood. So. OK. Um I, I was able to meet Mr. and Mrs. Burkrost. You came into my office, and um, you brought Rose with you. And your neighbors do adore you. They, they all like you. You're a very close neighborhood. And I listen to them, and I, I read through the information. I, I try not to make emotional decisions. But reading through it, you know, it's a single-family area. And I, I live probably two miles away from there. And it's all single-family houses. There isn't any other of these types of items in there. And um, I just, you know, with it being the character of that neighborhood, and it's a higher end at South Carpenter. I just, I just don't think this is a good fit in there. And um, so I struggle with that. And then with the deed restrictions also, I'm, I'm not going to vote in favor of this. Just, you know, we do this, you know, it's, it's able to, to start flowing through the whole community in that area. And I, I don't, I just don't think it's a good fit in this area. And I, and I know the area, I didn't visit it, but I know it quite well. So I, I'm going to not vote in favor of this tonight, ma'am. But your, your neighbors do like you. Just wanted to tell you that. Do I need a motion from the board? I'll make a motion that we deny the COP for the bed and breakfast in the EU zoning classification. Motion okay. by Commissioner Smith. Was that a second? Yes, it was. OK, I have a motion and a second. All in favor of denying it, say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Nay. It is denied three to one. Three to two. I'm not meaning to forget you, Commissioner Smith. Next item. Okay, item 4F is a request for a conditional use permit for on-premise consumption of alcoholic beverages for TAC Merritt Island, LLC. This is unit A10B consisting of 2,457 square feet it's located in the Home Depot Plaza on North Courtney Parkway. The Planning and Zoning Board recommended approval. Commissioner Barfield, this is yours. I have no objection to this, and I make a motion that we approve. I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? second. I have a second by Commissioner Tobiah. All in favor say aye. 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 It passes 5-0. Next item. Next item, 4G, is a request for a change in zoning classification from RU19 to GMLI for the school board of Brevard County. The property consists of 15 acres located on Lionel Road in Mims. The purpose of the request is to demo and rebuild a new library on the property. 
and this is basically housekeeping. It's something we've had in the plans, but we had to change it because the school board, correct? Okay, so it's pretty easy. Can I have a motion? I make a motion we approve the zoning request. Motion by Commissioner Barfield. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second. second by Commissioner Isnardi. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Okay, item 4H was uh, tabled to the December 7th board meeting. Ms. Aaron. And I'm going to present item 4I. Uh, if we could make a formal motion to table that last one. They requested okay. an automatic tabling, but if we could just make the record clear. Can I have a motion to table? I make a motion we table. I have a motion, second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes 5-0. Okay, so moving on to item 4I, um, it's regarding the transmittal of the evaluation and appraisal, or otherwise known as the EAR, uh, comp plan amendments, um, which are 2017-2.2. Uh, this has been a year and a half long effort that the county uh, staff and multiple departments have undertaken, so I'm just going to go through and kind of outline the state coordinated review process and where we are at in that process and when you'll see this again. Um, so every seven years, uh, in accordance with Florida Administrative Code, each local government must determine whether or not there's a need to amend the comp plan and reflect changes in statutory requirements that have been enacted since the previous year was implemented. Um, the, this board last saw this item uh, on November 25th. Uh, November 15th, 2016, uh, when you transmitted a letter to the state letting them know what our intentions were regarding making an ear comp plan amendment. Um, we initially planned to address any statutory requirements, which there was only one change in statute since our last ear comp plan amendment. Um, in a typical comp plan amendment cycle and not through an ear, but in coordination with the state and after discussing with them, we learned that we are obligated to do a, a full overhaul, which is what you have before you. Um, we, um, because of the change in the direction from the state, we took a very conservative approach to the changes. So most of the things are Scrivener errors, updates to agency names, um, and updates to uh, minor um, changes that we've had since uh, we last transmitted in an ear in 2009. Um, and I just wanted to point out that this is a dynamic process. If, if the board were to approve transmittal today, it's really more of a conversation with the state reviewing agencies where we have an opportunity to get feedback from them. Um, they send something called an objection, um, an objection recommendation and comments report. Uh, that will come back to us uh, within 60 days. And then beyond that, we have 180 days to address anything they recommend we change or update in the comp plan. So this is just the first piece of that. So we're asking that you um, approve the transmittal of the ear comp plan amendments. Um, I also want to point out there was one um, editorial oversight that we have. You have a policy 6.6 .6 in front of you. Um, it's something that we've included in the staff report, um, but we just somehow through editing we forgot to include it in the actual um, coastal management element. So there's just something that's been, um, the clerk has that on file. And so just to include a complete package, um, we've included that in front of you. Thank you, ma'am. Can I have a motion? You need a motion to send it? Yes. Can I have a motion to send? Make a motion we approve transmittal of the ear based amendments for 2017 2 point 2.2. Good motion. Do I have a second? Second. Can I have a second? All in favor say aye. 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 Passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I have no um, public comment cards, so we're going to move on to board reports. County manager. No report. County attorney. No, re no report. Commissioner Barfield. No report. Commissioner Tobiah. No report. Commissioner Isnardi. I just wanted to say quickly that, and thanks staff for all of your hard work getting that segment of the parkway open. I failed to talk about uh, Mr. Denninghoff and all of his hard work, but like I said, I sometimes take you for granted because you're just always there and you're always in the middle of it. So I just want to thank staff, 
previous commissioners. If I tried to name everybody that made this happen after all of these years, I would miss somebody and offend somebody, so I won't do that. But I think Commissioner Anderson in his previous role here really is the, was the key to get us really working hard and moving forward on it and, and bringing it to his commission to get approval. So thank you again. It was really exciting to see people driving on that road and it will leave, definitely alleviate traffic for us Southern Brevard residents. Congratulations on that. That makes it a good day in South Brevard, Commissioner Zanardi. That's great. And uh, I have no report. And Commissioner Smith, do you have a report, sir? No report. Okay, and I call. Oh, Commissioner Barfield. I'd like Barfield. to say one thing that we were getting out of here in less than an hour without you here, Commissioner Smith. Just a point. Duly <laughs> <Really> noted. <laughs> on that note, I call this meeting adjourned. The opinions expressed by any member of the public during any period of public comment do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, or the program sponsor and are solely those of the presenter. The Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, and the program sponsor hereby expressly disclaim any and all responsibility or liability for any defamatory or slanderous statements expressed by any member of the public during any such period.